Good evening, everybody. Um, thank you very much for uh, coming. It's fantastic to see you all here again at this evening's event. I just want to say a few words before handing you over to David. Uh, like last year's private viewing, this is a very special occasion. And I want to say how much uh, I appreciate you and uh, coming this evening and uh, the team that helped me uh, curate with David at the exhibition that you've come to see tonight. We're here this evening to celebrate the opening of the museum for the 2024 season and to show you all the second of our four-year planned series of art exhibitions that trace the journey through the early and formative years of the colony. The whole series should cover the years from 1835 to 1948. And following on from last year's award-winning discovery of St. Ives exhibition, uh, this year's show takes in the work executed here in the town from 1885 to the eve of World War I, 1914. Titled Capturing the Light, it celebrates the work of resident and visiting artists of that period and the influences of sun and moon lighting up the waters of the bay. Once again, this exhibition could not have been possible or executed without the assistance of David Tovey, whose generous support is so much appreciated. I'd also like to mention our wonderful team of volunteers that has made it all possible, and I'd like to thank them publicly for the fantastic effort in completing the new exhibition displays and bringing this show together. <laughs> While here tonight, I hope that you'll take the opportunity to not only enjoy the wonderful early paintings that have been brought home to where they were created all those years ago, but also to view the many other diverse and interesting exhibits that St Ives Museum has to offer, including our new Crusade and Troika displays. And we're very pleased that uh, the lady that offered our collection uh, for the crusade is here tonight, Victoria Hughes. And I'd like to say thank you very much, Victoria, for uh, donating that uh, work to us. Please spread the word that St Ives Museum is a great place to visit. We're a volunteer-run organisation celebrating 100 years in St Ives, since the creation by our founder, Robert Morton Nance. Under the motto uh, of the Old Cornwall Society, gather up the fragments before they be lost. With reference to the 100-year foundation of the museum, our outreach team, led by my colleague Peter Garrett, have created a town trail charting a different story to represent each of the 10 decades of the museum. And this trail will take the visitor on a fascinating journey around the town, covering many of the historical points of interest, and you will see our storyboards appear in various locations over the next few weeks. But back to tonight, to accompany the 2024 exhibition, David has provided us with his superb book charting the uh, story of early artists of this period, titled Pioneers of St Ives Art at Home and Abroad, which is on sale here this evening at a greatly reduced price, and uh, well worth it, I can assure you. So please can you now join me in welcoming Mr. David Tobey, who will give us an introduction to the work on display and tell us more about capturing the light. Please welcome David Tobey. Thank you very much indeed, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for coming along uh, this evening. This time last year, if you had told Andy and I that the exhibition that we put on would increase footfall to the museum by 60%, we would have been dumbfounded. I think we'd have been even more dumbfounded to be told that the exhibition was going to win the Cornish Heritage Exhibition of the Year. Um, but thanks to Andy and his team of enthusiastic volunteers, uh, we have managed to transform uh, the display place in the museum uh, so as to host an award-winning uh, exhibition. Now, I actually think that this year's exhibition is better than last year's, um, and that's really because the period of art that it covers is what I consider to be the heyday of representational art 
in St. Ives. Because in addition to other aspects, this is the period when St. Ives developed not only a national but an international reputation as a centre for the practice and teaching of landscape and marine painting. And that reputation derived initially uh, from Adrian Stokes, who uh, came to St. Ives in 1887 and had his painting Upland and Sky bought by the Chauncey Trustees in 1888. And this announced a new style of landscape painting in this country. It was a style based on the Barbizon School's concentration on tones and values, and was a reaction against the very detailed, over-dramatised landscapes of the pre-Raphaelites. So what Stokes produced, what he was interested in, was mood pieces. And these works were referred to in the press as lyrical paintings, poetic paintings, idealist paintings, sometimes neo-romantic paintings, but never realist paintings. They were intended to capture an exquisite moment in nature. And that is what the St. Ives landscape section developed a reputation for. And the result of Adrian Stokes's success was that students started to flock down to St. Ives to work alongside him. And in particular, students came down from the Herkimer Art School at Bushy. And many of those students settled in town. These include artists like Arnsby Brown, Algernon Talmadge, William Titcomb, Arthur Mead, Greville Morris, uh, they formed this distinct group of landscape painters uh, in the town, not all of whom unfortunately are able to be represented uh, in the exhibition uh, this year. And by the mid-1890s, the demand for tuition in landscape and marine painting in the town was such the two young artists who were very influenced by Adrian Stokes, namely Julius Olson and Louis Greer, decided to set up a school of painting devoted solely, really, to marine painting out of doors. And this school was unique because most art schools are based in towns. So the ability to actually paint a marine subject with your master behind your shoulder um, out in the open, which was very much in vogue at that stage, was not something that could be replicated elsewhere. And so we find students coming from all around the country, from Liverpool, from Birkenhead, um, and groups of students from the Slade School as well, coming down to learn marine painting in St. Ives. And that reputation then spread internationally. So. By 1901, for instance, that school of painting includes Emily Carr, Canada's most famous painter, and three Australians, Richard Haley Lever, who's represented in the show, Arthur Burgess, and Will Ashton, who went on to become Sir William Ashton. And this influx of foreign artists continued, so that uh, by 1914, uh, St. Ives was being referred to as the mecca of the seascapers. Any artist, even well-known artists, felt the need to come to St. Ives to practice marine painting alongside the acknowledged British masters, such as Olsen. And Charles Bryant, the Australian, talks about the wonderful camaraderie in the colony, where it was possible to get advice from the very best painters, the most eminent marine painters in the world, were here giving advice to young students. And so we have this extraordinary statistic that in the summer of 1914, there were 50 American artists working in St. Ives. That is just an astonishing thing. Um, and so St. Ives influenced the careers of the leading marine painters in America, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, apart from 
other countries as well. So the impact of these artists on the international stage is enormous. And it's so rare that British art actually influences uh, the world uh, that this should be something that is celebrated much more uh, than it is. Now, uh, in an exhibition which is relatively small and just drawn from uh, a private collection and a private collector with limited pockets, um, I can't do the, uh, the subject full justice. So I'm going to be giving a couple of lectures over the course of the summer. Uh, the first one is at the Portsmouth Studios on the 18th of May, uh, which was a Saturday evening, when I'm going to be looking at the contribution that the British artists made to, uh, in particular, to landscape and marine painting in this country. And then at the September Festival, I'll be looking at the international influence uh, that the colony had uh, in America, Canada, etc. <coughs> um, so that will be able to put the exhibition into greater context. Well, I think that's probably enough for me, from me, other than to, to thank Andy and his wonderful team of enthusiastic volunteers once more for all the time and effort that they put in to uh, getting this show hung and looking as good uh, as it does. Um, we still have got a long way to go for the museum to get museum accreditation. Uh, so that we can actually start borrowing paintings from public collections, because that must be the ultimate aim, uh, so that we can really show off uh, the work, the top work that was produced in St. Ives um, during this and later periods. Uh, I'm sure that will happen in, in due course with your support, um, both by being here, spreading the word, and uh, if you're able to help financially, I'm sure that would uh, be a bonus as well. But without further ado, um, I am very happy to declare this exhibition open.